Welcome to Thrifty Thursday, where we are saving money in the kitchen. Hi, I'm Hope. And I'm Larry. From Under the Median. As I mentioned, this is Thrifty Thursday. Mm -hmm. Every Thursday, we love coming to you and bring you quick, easy tips, ways that you can spend less and save more. This is part two of a three-part series in which we're talking about small changes and why they're so important and how over a period of time, even small changes can add up to big money. So if practical frugality is something you're interested in learning more about, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell. Larry, before we get started, we actually have an announcement. Announcement. Well, if you can't tell, and I think you probably can, we've got all new equipment we're rolling out here. Woo. And uh, in fact, I'm still getting kind of used to what it does. <laughs> so, but we've gone total full HD now. So hopefully you'll be able to uh, see us better and, um, it will be able to present a little higher quality video for you. So tell us in the comment section when you get done watching the video, if this was better for you, if you notice a difference in the quality, because we are like super, super excited about the new equipment. <laughs> now, back to our previously scheduled program, where we're talking <laughs> about how to save money in the kitchen. Now, if you missed last week's program, you're gonna wanna make sure to watch that after you're done with this program. Last week, we were all about the laundry room and how to save money on laundry. I showed you in four quick, easy ways how you can drop your laundry costs by half. Today, we're talking the kitchen. We have 10 tips for you about how you can actually save not only money, but also some time in the kitchen. So mm -hmm. let's yeah. get started. Tip number one. Uh, tip number one would be measure your dish soap. Now, how do we measure the dish soap? Now, last week we talked about laundry soap and we talked about how the fact that people are using far more laundry soap than they need to use. Same thing in the kitchen, guys. Mm -hmm. When you do dishes, the first thing you do is pick up the dish detergent and you just dump it upside down and start squeezing it into the water, right? That's what most of us do, especially if you have kids who are helping you with the dishes. That's what they do. Or especially if you're a guy. That's a guy's <laughs> if you're a guy and you're doing the lot. <laughs> if you're a guy and you're doing the dishes. So what we want to let you know is that, do you know how much you actually need? One tablespoon of high quality dish detergent will do an entire sink full of dishes. We have a couple of tips for you on how you can actually know that you're not using too much dish detergent. Mm -hmm. What you want to do is take your dish detergent and then just take some of the detergent and fill up one of these bottles. Okay. Make sure it's empty. All right. It's not going to have the hand soap in it. And you're just going to label in permanent marker on the front. You're going to label it as dish detergent, right? So now you have your dish detergent and you are going to put a tablespoon underneath of here and pump. And you're going to figure out how many pumps is equal to one tablespoon of detergent. Then when the kids do dishes on here, make sure you leave enough room. So you're going to say dish soap on the front and then underneath in thick black marker, you're going to say three pumps or two pumps. However many pumps is one tablespoon. There will be no more guessing for the kids. They're going to look at it and know <laughs> I'm going to use two pumps of this per sink full of dishes. And that's enough to do the whole sink full of dishes. You will save an amazing amount of detergent just in that one tip. Mm -hmm. Uh, the next thing you want to do is try to buy your soap on sale. Larry's going to show you the great deal that we got on soap. Now, there are two ways that you can do this. Either you can wait for places like Kroger, um, Walgreens, CVS. They do put detergent on sale. And if you can score a sale price and add on a manufacturer coupon, you're going to actually be able to buy dish soap for unbelievably low prices. I've done it and it works. But usually what you're purchasing, you can only get one of them at that price usually. Sometimes if it's a Kroger deal, it's a five for five deal. You can get five of them at that price. But usually you're buying a small quantity. I like to keep dish detergent on hand. It's one of those things mm -hmm. I keep in our pantry to keep it stocked up fully. So I do like to buy larger containers when I can find them. And Larry's going to tell you the really cool way that we have found uh, large quantities of detergent at great prices. Well, first of all, I want to mention that not just buying large quantity, you want to buy a good quality detergent. Because yes. a good quality detergent will go farther. 
And one of the brands that we like is Palm Olive. Now this we bought at Big Lots. There it is. It is a whole 90 fluid ounces. That's a, that's a big bottle. That'll last a long time. If you find that this bottle is too big to manage, as Hope said, put it in a smaller container that you can manage better and uh, your kids can use. And then you'll have it. That'll last you a long, long time. We were able to get this 20% off at Big Lots. Total price, $4. And that was a good deal. All right, so look for those larger bottles of uh, dish soap and make sure that it's good quality dish soap. Tell us in the comments section. We've done it. We've all done it, guys. You can go ahead and tell us in the comments. It'll be cool. Have you tried the less expensive detergent for dishes and been woefully disappointed by the amount of detergent you actually had to put into that water to get it to wash a load of dishes. We've done it. We've done yeah. it before because you, you look, you stand in front of all these dish soaps and you think, you know, there can't be that much difference. And you buy the lesser expensive one and find out you also got lesser quality. Oh, yeah. So make sure it's a good quality dish soap and you will only have to use one tablespoon. Makes a difference. Tip number three. Um, refill hand soap containers using large refills because the same principle as the dishwashing so this is a, a large container and that'll last us a long time by filling it into smaller containers that we keep in the bathrooms and the kitchens for each of us to wash our hands now we uh, like to get this at big lots once again when we get that mm -hmm. precious 20 or 33 percent off coupon they send coupons out periodically usually it's five dollars off 15 or you get 20 percent off your whole order uh this actually is very reasonably priced getting it that way at big lots several of you have said in the comment section that you have actually found large containers of soap refill containers at dollar tree now if that's true if that's you i want to know in the comment section if you can get this at dollar tree because i have never seen it there and i would love to get it there hmm. you said large containers so you got this large container you're not going to use it directly out of here you're going to refill one of these containers that you got this is a regular pump just pumps out straight uh hand soap now we're talking about hand soap because then in the kitchen you have your dish soap and then you get your hand soap next to it all right so this is regular hand soap dispenser going to pump out the whole thing this is a foaming dispenser. I learned this trick from you all in the comments section. Thank you, you changed my life. These foaming dispensers can be refilled. Now, when you refill it, you don't put straight soap into a foaming dispenser. You dilute it and it is a ratio of four parts water to one part soap. So if you're going to put a cup of water into the foaming dispenser container, you're going to add a quarter cup of soap, just a quarter cup of this, one cup of water, and you can either put it in, you can either put it like in a glass uh, measuring cup and then gently stir it before you pour it in here, or just pour it in here and then kind of just do this to mix it up and it works great guys thank you so much for sharing that tip with me but i wanted to pass it on to everyone else so everyone would know so that's going to make the soap go four times as far if as long as you're yeah. mixing it with some water <laughs> this baby is going to last now four times longer it's going to like last that. a really long time yeah tip number four is you know we've done this for years um we buy these scouring pads at sam's and uh, they're, they're pretty large. In fact, they're, they're really too large for you to use. See how big that is? And um, so what I do is I, I cut this in about eight different directions. So I, I cut it in half and cut it in force and then cut it down some more. And we use these as scouring pads for when we're doing the dishes and you got some extra material on a plate you need to get off. These are, are the, for, for one, the Scotch Bright are good quality. Mm -hmm. These last a long time and you can use them for so many different things so this is another one of those things we're going to tell you to get good quality mm -hmm. uh, we have tried the lesser quality pads if you have tried something that actually costs less than scotch bright and you have loved it tell us in the comment section because um i'd love to know we've tried some off-brand ones as well and not been nearly as satisfied with them uh, we will cut this into eighths as larry said and i will put it in the kitchen, use it for scouring dishes. It's a great size to be able to get down in cups, things like that. And once I've used it five or six times, then it starts to wear down. Then it goes 
from the kitchen into the bathroom for bathroom use. And then it becomes the bathroom scouring pad that you can scrub the floor with, things like that. Uh, you just gotta make sure that once you just scrub the bathroom, you don't, it doesn't go back to the kitchen, you're right? You gotta have a special place for it in the bathroom where you know those scouring pads are gonna stay in the bathroom. I'll set that down there. Yeah. Okay. The, uh, the next item is, uh, this is an unusual item that I don't think we even knew about until our sons bought us a couple sets of these. But <clears throat> these are micro soft fiber cloths and they are amazingly absorbent. They are just, I, you remember the ads for the quicker picker upper, right. you know, the, the paper towel? Well, these are even better than that. Y'all, we are replacing the quicker picker upper or any <laughs> derivative thereof in our house with these microfiber cloths. We have talked on this channel at length about saving money and we have mentioned before that it's a great idea to take um, when clothing starts to wear out, especially if it's like cotton t-shirts and things, you can just cut those up into squares. Yes, you can just fold them neatly, put them in your kitchen, use them instead of paper towels. We all do that and that's fine. But if you want something that's really designed to be absorbent and is going to last pretty long, then these are great. Uh, my, our older son's got me these for, I think it was for Mother's Day, which made me super happy. Yeah, it was. Uh, they're made yeah. by Amazon Basics. I'll leave a link in the description of the video. In fact, I'll leave a link for the Scotch Bright, Scotch Bright uh, pads too, guys. Uh, I like these. It came, I think it was, I think there were 24 in the set and there were three colors. So there were eight of each color. And I liked it because like these are for the bathroom and then I have a set of eight of them that are white for mm -hmm. the kitchen. Mm -hmm. And then I have a set of blue that are eight of those and they're for the upstairs bathroom. And so because they're color coded, you can like decide which ones you're gonna use for what space in your house. They really are. They are designed to be absorbent. Yeah, very much so, very much so. Uh, the next thing is buy used kitchen gadgets and small appliances. Now, we do this a lot. We buy quite a bit from our local thrift store or garage sales. You can get quite a few of these pieces at estate sales if you have them in your country and save a lot of money. But the one thing that you want to do is go to the manufacturer website and look for recalls. And Hope will explain that. This is the concern that people get, right? They're like, I don't want to know, I don't want to buy something that is an older model because I'm afraid that there's a recall on it or that it's not safe. So what you want to do is go ahead, purchase it, especially if you find a really great deal on it. Go home and search under, let's say, that I'm just going to say arbitrarily that it is a general electric crock pot. You're going to, you're going to search general electric crock pot recalls. There's a specific model number on your crock pot. After you get to the recall page, you're going to search within that page for your specific model to see if that model is mentioned. Now, in order to do this, what you're going to do is you are going to hold the control key and then you're going to pr press F simultaneously, control F. And that is going to bring up search function and it's going to say find and there's a little blank you're to put in your model number in that blank push enter and it's going to tell you how many times that your model appears in that document it's going to highlight it in yellow and literally it's going to allow you to scroll through from one mention of your model to the next mention to the next mention and so you'll be able to very quickly scan that document and see exactly when your model is mentioned if it says it's all models except your model. You'll be able to find the information you need and find it quick. I know from experience, manufacturers don't care if you got it as a gift, mm -hmm. if you bought it new, if you bought it at a church rummage sale, if you bought it at a garage sale, or if you found it on the side of the road. They wanna know that you currently own it. If you do and there's a recall, they are going to send you a brand new unit. Mm -hmm. We've, we've had that happen too with one of our play pens. We, we send in information and they didn't care uh, that we bought it used or was it even given to us? No, we got it for like seven us. bucks at a garage sale, mm -hmm. got home, found okay. out there was a recall on it and they said, we don't care where you got it from. We're going to send you a brand new one because it is under a recall. Yeah, so uh, that's a good Generally, thing they, to Generally, they send you a postpaid. They they send the, the new unit out to you and they send you a postpaid box to put your old unit in, send it back to them. Doesn't cost you a penny to actually uh, get a new unit. I might mention that what Hope was talking about in terms of 
finding your model number on a manufacturer's website with the control key, that's for, that's for a Macintosh computer. Mm -hmm. So if you have a PC, you'll want to do the right click and that will bring up the find function. Then you enter in your model number and hit return and then that should go right down to your model. All right, the next set of tips that we have for you all deal with food. We're in the kitchen, so we're gonna deal with food. And the way that you actually prepare food, there are specific things you can do that will actually drop your overall energy usage and thus drop your bills. All right, Larry, go. Tip, okay. tip number seven, which is the first in the area of cooking is? Well, there's different ways you can cook. And we've talked about them on this program before. In fact, Hope's even done some demonstrations on it. You can bulk cook, batch cook, or do the end of the week fridge clean out. Now, I just recently did a video where I showed you everything that was in my refrigerator. I showed you a list of what I had available and showed you exactly how I menu planned using what I had in the house and made enough. I think it was four or five main dishes I was able to make out of just what we had in the house. And it was at the end of the week to make sure we didn't wind up throwing things in the garbage because they had rotted. If you don't mm -hmm. watch that video, I'm gonna make sure there's a link up above and in the description of this video. Now, all of these tips that we're covering right now, I actually made a chart. Yes. Yes, I'm so excited. I made you guys a chart. So- Hope loves charts. I do, I love charts, you know I do. And so, as we, we're going to discuss them, and then I'm going to show you the chart in detail so you'll be able to see exactly how these components that we're talking to you about, actually, you'll see how they fit together and how they work in harmony with one another. <laughs> All right, so you're going to bulk cook. Um, tip number eight. Well, it's the cheapest way to cook. Use the stovetop as opposed to using the oven. Give them an mm -hmm. idea of how much energy that actually saves. Uh, putting stuff on top of the stove instead of in the oven. Well, we have electric oven and an electric stove at our house in the upstairs kitchen. So by comparing it just with electricity, you'll want to use the stove top. It's mm -hmm. cheaper than using the oven. Right, as opposed to the oven. So right. like what price comparison are we talking about? How much are they saving by using the stove well, top? Uh, at, at least as far as an electric oven goes, and that's what we use upstairs in our upstairs kitchen, that's mm -hmm. what cook, Hope cooks with, it uses about 30 two cents per hour you're mm -hmm. cooking it in the oven whereas on the stovetop burner it's about 20 cents per hour so that's that's quite a bit cheaper that's 12 cents cheaper i have actually looked so in on our utility company website i can go into the back end of my account and i can see exactly how my usage varies from one hour to the next the minute that i turn on that electric oven you can tell it our electric usage just goes up yeah, it spikes. Exponentially. It spikes, it it? spikes way yeah. up. So yeah, your electric oven uses more energy than you think <laughs> that it does. Now I'm gonna I'm What gonna about gas? I'm gonna assume most yeah. of you are using gas and we have gas in the basement here. We have two kitchens. We have two kitchens. <laughs> two kitchens. Yeah, we have a, we have an old gas stove in the basement from nineteen forty seven. It's the but, summer kitchen. <laughs> yeah. Um so the the cost of a gas oven is about thirty five to fifty percent cheaper and that all depends on how much you pay in your area for gas. Now for those who are out in the country, you're using propane and that's substantially more expensive than natural gas. Whole so, different ball of wax. So you might have to do some of your own computations there to see which is better for you. That's right, so what we're telling you is find out what your rate is for your method of cooking mm -hmm. and then it, it doesn't really matter the, the method of cooking, the, using the oven as opposed to the stovetop, the stovetop is always going to win out and be less expensive. Yeah. That's the whole idea. All that's, right. That's right. Tip number nine. And remember, I'm gonna show you like one of my way cool handy dandy charts that I did from all of my research. I'll show you that in just a sec. All right, number nine. Uh, number nine is use your toaster oven. Now a toaster oven uses substantially less electricity uh, than your oven's gonna use. About one third, actually. It does, yeah, about you'll save about 66% off of using your toaster oven as opposed to using your electric oven. So what I would recommend is getting a pretty good sized toaster oven that you can, you can put like a casserole dish in. Some of them are pretty small. You know, you we actually measured ours. Oh, does that seem weird? Mm, no, because you gotta know how big it is to know I how think, to use it. Do we it. measure it before or after we? 
in uh, the uh, bought it. I can't remember. We, we looked online and it, it it gave the dimensions online before. I actually went and bought it at Walmart, but we looked online at at the uh, recommendations and the sizes for it. He surprised me. I brought it home. <laughs> I, did. I did. And the first thing I did was get out my casserole dish and make sure it was going to fit in there before <laughs> before we decided if we were going to keep it or not. And so, it's just the right size yeah, for Yeah, it does. Family. So one of our big size casserole dishes, guys, fits into our toaster oven. So you want to think about that. Toaster ovens come in all different sizes and shapes. And make sure whatever you're using, if you just got enough in there for a piece of toast, it's just really not going to be that much savings. You want to have a toaster oven big enough that you can actually fit some stuff inside of it. Well, then if you have a family, we can actually toast six slices of bread at one time or uh, or a couple of bagels. I think we can even do three bagels with the halves split. So so it gives you a little bit more room to, to kind, of, kind of bulk toast, so to speak. <laughs> Okay, so we've talked about using the oven, using the stove top. And by the way, when you're using that stove top, make sure that you are using pans that are fit to the size burners you're using. Mm -hmm. You don't want to put a small pan on a large burner. Those large burners do use more energy yeah. than the small burners. Yeah. So if you get a small pan, small burner. Mm -hmm. Large pan, large burner. Make sure the size of the pan fits the burner. So we talked about those things. We talked about toaster ovens. What's the next appliance that they can actually seriously well, drop this, their energy consumption? This is a great appliance for saving money and saving some time. It's a crock pot. Uh, you can throw soup in a crock pot or, or a chicken if you, if you eat meat. Uh, and you can cook it all day while you're at work, get home, and there's your meal all ready for you. Very convenient. And they do not use a lot of electricity. Most of them use about 125 watts when they're on low power. So that's, that's about like a light bulb. Uh, well, the old-fashioned light bulbs. <laughs> you know, the old tungsten light bulbs. Now, here's the big question. Do you remember what we told you it cost you to run your large oven, an electric oven, for one hour? 32 cents for one hour. It costs to run your crock pot on average for one hour. It costs, should I do my drum roll? <laughs> There's my drum roll. It costs between two and three cents for one hour. There you go. That is the tremendous savings. Those of you who have a crock pot and it's been sitting in your cabinet for months and you've never touched it, or you honestly don't believe in your heart of hearts <laughs> that using your crock pot is going to make any difference in your electric consumption, it does. It absolutely will drop your energy consumption. You know, uh, Hope's the queen of crock pots. How many do you own? Well, three? I owned more, but the boys took one when they moved out. So you got what, three <laughs> I left? gave them one. I shouldn't say they took one. I, I gifted them with one of my crock pots. <laughs> now I think I have three left. Three left. I had four. Now I have I three. Four. They're all three different sizes. But you know, she's had at least three going at one oh, time yeah. up there in the kitchen. Oh yeah, bulk cooking day. There's yeah. easy two, three crock pots sitting on the counter <laughs> on, on bulk cooking day. And um, we're gonna take a look. I'm gonna show you some charts that I made for you to, to give you real life, honest to God examples of how <laughs> this works in real life, guys. So you're gonna be so excited to see at real examples of how much money you can save by using these techniques. Uh, but I really want to talk to you just a sec about your crock pot. <laughs> you need to re-envision your crock pot. If the only thing you see your crock pot as being good for is soup, then you need to really rethink your crock pot use. I made a list. Larry, these are all things. I'm Larry's going to read the list for you. These are all things that I have personally used our crock pot to do. Go ahead. Okay, this is magic. She uses it to reheat freezer meals, mm -hmm. to do yogurt, baked beans, yogurt. soups, main dishes, homemade broth, marinara sauce, cake, breads, cake desserts, breads. side dishes, baked potatoes, hot drinks, apple butter, overnight oatmeal, and candy, like candied almonds. Now... I know that there are some of you out there that can actually add to that list. Oh, much more, I'm sure. I yeah. know there's more that you can do with a crock pot. So tell us in the comments section, how else do you use your crock pot? Let's take a look at some of these way cool charts that I made for you that show you how we tie all of this information together and help you to save money in your kitchen. 
This first chart is going to show you an example of kitchen appliance energy usage and how the different kinds of appliances sort of stack up against one another as far as energy usage is concerned. We gave you these stats in the program, but I wanted to make sure that you could see a direct comparison side by side because I think it just makes so much sense to be able to see a visual representation of exactly what we're talking about. So there's your electric oven, 3000 watts guys. So that means that in an hour, you're gonna spend 32 cents an hour. Now that doesn't seem much, but I'm gonna show you in just a sec how much difference that really does make, for instance, over the course of a month or even a year. That um, electric stove top, remember we talked about small burners versus large burners. Your small burner is 1500 watts and the large burner is 2500. So you can see right away, it really does make a difference to make sure that the size pot that you're using fits the size burner that you're using. For the other thing, if you have a small pot on top of a really large burner, you're wasting all that energy around the edge that isn't even touching the bottom of the pot because the pot's too small for the burner. You're going to use 20 cents per hour using that uh, stove top. Now, the toaster oven, we mentioned, see, 10 cents per hour. That's a full 66% less than using that electric oven. There's your crock pot. Mm, there's the frugal person's dream, guys. On low, 150 watts, and on high, that's the average. Uh, some crock pots, depending on the size, can be as low as 75 watts on the low um, end, and um, as high as like 225 or 250 on the high end, those really large crock pots. So what I'm showing you here is actually, this is an average, okay? So if you look at your unit and it's more or it's less, well, it's probably because it's larger or smaller than average. Average. This is average. You're going to send, spend somewhere between two and three cents per hour. So what does this mean? All right. So we can see what the chart shows. How can you even tell uh, what you're using and then sort of make a plan for using less than you're using now? Because I got to be honest, I just go from day to day and cook, right? I don't pay attention to what implement I'm using to cook with or even think about how much that is costing me. The only way that you are going to be able to figure out how to lower your energy usage is if you know what your energy usage is in the first place. So a good way to do that is to just make yourself a little chart like this, all right? You got your appliances across the top here, days of the week down here. You use your oven, then you're on a Monday for, let's like, say, two hours. You're going to say Monday, put a little check mark here, use for two hours. Then on Tuesday, let's say you heated something up on the stove top for an hour. You're going to say, check mark, I used my stove top, I used it for one hour. Then at the end of the week, it's so easy just to total up the number of hours you use each type of appliance. And you can look right up here and get this, the cost per hour for each of the appliances. And then just do a simple math computation and figure out what your cost is for each of those appliances over the course of a week. I like to do it this way. This is an energy usage guide that doesn't go by appliance. It goes by appliances, but it doesn't go by days of the week. It goes by what I made. I really like to do it this way because because um, I bulk cook so much. So I just want to know how much it's costing me to make each thing that I'm making throughout the course of the week. This is an example for those of you who just really don't have a toaster oven or you got that crock pot and it's got spider webs on it right in the back here, <laughs> in the back of your uh, cupboard. Uh, I'm going to encourage you right now to get it out because I'm going to show you two examples. One example is um, a person who just really uses their oven or their stovetop and that's all they use. I'm going to show you the exact same recipes and this is a person who has bulk cooked and has spread out the usage toward this end rather than this end all right so it, this is an example as i say guys i came up with these arbitrarily i gotta be honest i thought what do i make all right so spanish rice baked potatoes lasagna pizza calzone split pea soup white bean soup and spaghetti sauce just an example of seven different main dishes you might make throughout the course of a week. If you're using just your oven and your stove top, you're going to spend about three hours of things in the oven. You're not cooking any of these simultaneously. You're heating up the oven three separate times 
for three separate amounts of time. Same thing here on the cooktop, all right? You're making the split pea soup from scratch and the white bean soup from scratch. It's going to simmer on that stovetop for about two hours before it's done. The spaghetti sauce to get all those fav flavors to marry, it's going to cook down for about an hour so that the flavors come together and it thickens because you're making that from scratch too, right? So you're going to spend about three hours with that electric oven during the week and six hours with the stovetop, which means it's going to cost you right over here a grand total of $2.16. That doesn't seem like a whole lot, but please remember that is for one week one week out of 52 weeks of the year, which means that you're spending well over $100 a year just to cook food. Here's what happens when we look at that same energy use and we really throw in that bulk cooking. In this case, I put the baked potatoes, the lasagna, and the calzones. I made those up ahead, and I threw them all in the oven on my bulk cooking day for an hour and a half all together in the same oven. Then I did exactly the same thing with the split pea soup, the white bean soup, and the Spanish rice. I made all three of those in my three lovely little different sized crock pots. Now, 16 hours is the total amount of crock pot time. Each one of those things is going to take on high. It's going to take four to six hours for each of them. So I thought, well, we're just going to say an average of 16 hours it's it's not time that you're standing in the kitchen nobody stands in their kitchen and like stares at their crock pot for the whole time it's on you, should, you walk in periodically give it a stir and then you walk back out again so this isn't time that you're standing in your kitchen spaghetti sauce all right i'm just gonna i ran out of crock pots that's the serious answer to this question otherwise i would have put crock pot for the spaghetti sauce too but i realized i only have three crock pots and i was out of crock pots so i put the spaghetti sauce on the stove top for an hour so the total number of oven time was 1.5 hours instead of three hours that's 48 cents the total amount of stove top time one one hour that was 20 cents and then look at the crock pot time we got 16 hours of crock pot time for 40 cents the total amount we spent one dollar eight cents and I don't I can scroll back up here two dollars sixteen cents that was the total when we were using just our oven and our stove top so you can see that is a 50 percent savings right there now that example was just showing seven main dishes arbitrary dishes that I just sort of pulled out of my hat you certainly cook more than that during the course of a week. Those were just main dishes. Uh, you serve lunch, you serve breakfast, you serve snacks to your family. So over the course of a year, I would estimate based on my computations, you're probably spending upwards of between two and $300 a year at least just to cook the food that you are feeding your family. Now, by looking at those lower cost per hour alternatives I just showed you, you're going to cut that amount at least in half. Did you find these charts to be helpful? If you did, I'd love to know about it. Let me know in the comments section because if the charts are helpful, I love making them for you and making sure that the examples that we're giving on the program really come to life and show you exactly how they come to bear out in your own family, in your own life, and in your own cooking. Did you find out anything that you didn't already know? Has the program been helpful to you? We would love to know in the comment section. Now, next week, I actually have 20, yes, 20 more tips for you. Next week is all dedicated to saving money on your electric usage. And in next week's pro program, there are actually um, a fair number of those ways that one can save on electricity that are also located in the kitchen of your home. So you're going to get some more kitchen tips and you're going to get some saving on electricity tips throughout your entire home. But remember, this is part two of this series. And if you missed part one, you're gonna wanna go back and you're gonna wanna make sure that you watch it. Now to make sure you don't miss a thing, what's the most important thing they can do, Larry? Well, one of the things you can do is make sure that you're subscribed to our channel and click on the video. That's last week's video. It was on laundry tips, how to save money on your laundry.